What's up, Real Life family? We are so grateful for the opportunity to worship with you today. We are excited because we know that all it takes is one encounter with God to change your whole life. And we believe that that day could be today. We would love it if you would share this experience. Click on the share button or copy the link and send it to a friend. Also, be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So stay connected to your real life family. Well, it's about that time to get started. Thanks again for joining us. All right, Real Life, how we doing? Oh, that was like 2% of the room. How you feeling this morning? You good? Awesome. Just checking if you drank your coffee today. It's so good to see you this morning. Hey, can you do me a favor? Help me welcome everybody watching online. Come on, big shout outs to Mount Dora, the Orlando campus, our community hubs. We're so grateful that you guys are tuning in today. My gosh, you guys sounded so good during worship. Wow. We got a room full of shower singers today. So good. I'm a worshiper, but I'm tone deaf. I can't sing. But hey, it's so good to be with you here this morning. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Mike. I get to serve as a campus pastor uh, at the Orlando campus. So I am your Cuban cousin that comes in on occasion and I open up your refrigerator and take all your food and I just show up. But I, hey, I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, before I go any further, I just wanna give honor to our lead pastor. How many of you guys are thankful for our lead pastor, Justin Miller? Come on, can you give him a big round of applause? Awesome. I, I tell you what, man, I feel like it was a setup, honestly. He preached three weeks of straight fire and then they brought me to close in the message. It's like, that is just not right, you know? That's not cool. Uh, but hey, we honor Pastor Jay. We're so grateful for his teaching and for building such an amazing church. But here's what we know. Uh, behind every great man, there's always a greater woman. We got Robin in the front row. Can you make some noise for Robin? We're awesome. We're awesome. All right, you guys ready for the word? All right, let's get into it today. I'm really excited to preach. We're gonna be continuing our series called Heart for the House. Heart for the House. And week one, Pastor Jay walked us through how we believe God has called us to have a heart to reach the lost. Week two, Pastor Jay talked about how we believe that we are supposed to have a heart for service. Week three, we talked about having a heart for generosity. Today, we're gonna to be talking about having a heart for prayer. Say prayer. prayer. Oh, say it with your chest. Say prayer. prayer. We're gonna be talking about having a heart for prayer, for prayer. Now, I think it's right that we're ending this series with this topic because how many of you guys know we can't do spiritual work on natural power? In order to do the thing that God has called us to do, we need the power of the Holy Spirit that comes only through prayer and connection with Jesus. So the only way that we're gonna have a heart for the lost and serve people and be generous and make a difference in our city, our home, and in our world is if we have this connection to God that actually only happens through prayer. Now today, uh, I'm excited to, to give you this verse. It's found in the book of Matthew, but before we get there, uh, I wanna give you some context. Over 2,000 years ago, it's a Sunday morning. Jesus wakes up out of bed. He stretches his arms. He takes a really, really big yawn. He walks to his kitchen. He goes to his Nespresso machine. He makes coffee because Christians drink coffee. Can I get an amen? amen? And they also use Apple phones. If you use an Android, I'm not sure if you're a Christian. I'm just like, I'm just saying. So Jesus wakes up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just divided the room. Uh, so Jesus wakes up in the morning. He grabs his cup of coffee and he is on his way to church in the morning. Now here, we are getting ready to take a picture. We're getting ready to take a look at a picture of Jesus that we rarely ever, ever, ever see. Because usually Jesus in scripture, he's nice, he's kind, he's smiling. He always has his hands like this in every photo. Like he's getting ready to throw a curveball every time. And Jesus is on his way to church and it, he gets extremely upset. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a picture of savage Jesus. This is like gangster thug life Jesus right now. 
Because Jesus walks into the church, he is so upset because he sees people conducting sales and selling merchandise in the temple and he gets so angry, he starts flipping tables over. He starts kicking people out of the church and then he says something that is absolutely wild. By the way, before we get there, the reason that he was upset wasn't because people were conducting business and selling stuff. The reason that he was upset was because the only reason people were coming to church was to gain a profit. Meaning that they were going to church for their own selfish gain and intention instead of actually connecting with God. I know this never happens in the American modern day mega church. I know. People never walk in and they're never like, the lights are too dark or the lights are too bright. Why aren't they singing my favorite song today? I should be up there singing. Why is this crazy Cuban guy preaching today? I should be preaching today. What is going on? None of this makes any sense. I swear, one of the first times I preached, this really big guy, he comes up to me. He's huge. I'm 6'2". This guy was towering over me. He comes up to me. He goes, hey, you preaching today? I go, yeah. He goes, how you feel? I go, I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. He's like, all right, well, bless me if you can, big boy. And and he walks away. I was terrified. Now, I know that never happens here. I know, I know, I know. But in that day, it did happen. And Jesus was so upset because people were going for their own selfish intentions to church. And this is what he says in Matthew chapter 21. He blows a whistle on the call and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We are are doing this wrong. Like this is not the way that it's supposed to go. And then he says in Matthew chapter 21, he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Notice how he did not say my house shall be called a house of preaching and teaching. Necessary but not the name of the church. Notice how he did not say, my house should be called a house of singing and worship. Necessary, but not what he called the church. What he said was, my house shall be called a house of prayer. By the way, let's pay attention to the fact that Jesus says, this is his house. This is not my house, and it's not your house. It's his house, his rules. My gosh, I feel Pentecostal this morning. (laughs) It's his house. I remember my mom, she's Cuban. She bought this couch and she put plastic all over the couch. I go to the house, I put my feet on the couch. She slaps my feet off the couch. She said, this is my couch. Get your feet off my couch. Meaning that when we walk into God's house, it's his rules, not our rules. I'm just praying for a church that gets this revelation that this is God's house. It's his rules. He's the head. He's the leader. He's the one we follow. He's the one we look to. This is not built upon man. It's built upon God. He's the one that we look to. Telling me that if we're gonna build God's house, we need to follow God's instruction. I remember (laughs) seven years ago, my wife and I, we got married and bro, we were broke. We were, we, were, we, were, we were poor, we were poor. We couldn't afford the OR. It was bad. And uh, we had a mattress on the floor for the first six months of our marriage. We couldn't afford a bed frame, but it was awesome. You know, it was great. And uh, eventually we got a little bit of money and we were like, my gosh, we get to buy a bed frame. So I buy this bed frame, this box shows up to the house and my wife looks at me, she goes, babe, babe, don't worry about building it. We're gonna build it together. I just gotta tell you, she didn't say that because she was being nice. She said that because she knew that I'm terrible at building things. I, got, I, am not, I, am, I am not a handyman. I am the man who hands the man the tools. That, that is just, that's just who I am, okay? And this box comes to the house and my wife, she actually goes off to run an errand and I start to think to myself, my God, this is a great opportunity for me to be able to show my wife that I am the man of the house. I'm the man of her dreams. So I look at this box and the box says, built within an hour. I start building this bad boy. I look at the picture. I throw the instructions across the bedroom. I don't look at the instructions because I'm a man. We just look at images and we put stuff together that way. And I'm building this, I'm building this thing four hours later. (laughs) The bed was done. I pick up the mattress. I put the mattress on top of the bed frame and boof, it falls right through the bed frame. 
Why? Because I didn't follow the instructions. And God is saying that if you're gonna build my house, you gotta follow the instructions. By the way, I just want you to know that when Jesus says my house, he's no longer just talking about the four walls of the church. He's talking about you. The Bible says that when you and I enter into a relationship with Jesus, he fills us with his Holy Spirit. And as a, as a result, the Holy Spirit, God, now lives on the inside of us. And you and, now, you and I now become his house. And Jesus is saying, my house, you, you were supposed to be a house of prayer, meaning that the atmosphere of your life should be one where prayer comes out of you. It's kind of like how the apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. It means to constantly live in this God awareness today. Today, I wanna take an opportunity and I wanna take a look at a story of a 12-year-old little boy by the name of Samuel. Samuel was a prophet in the Old Testament and Samuel had a really cool story. He had a mom who couldn't have children and one day his mom starts praying and crying out to God that she would give him a son and if God would give her a son, he, she would raise him in the house of the Lord. He would serve and work in the temple. Eventually, God answers the prayer. And here we have 12-year-old little Samuel, day in and day out, living in the church, serving God. But he's serving a priest, a leader by the name of Eli. And according to God, Eli was not honoring him. Eli was not living right. Eli was sinning. And Eli failed to reconcile his heart and give his heart back to God. And one day, this little boy, Samuel, he goes to bed. And I love what the story says. All of a sudden, after he goes to bed, all of a sudden, he hears the voice of God. Notice how he didn't chase God's voice, but God's voice chased him. You're here today because God was after you, not because you were after God. It's not by a coincidence that you're here today, friend. The reason that you're here today is because God brought you here to let you know that he loves you. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And now we see that God's voice chases Samuel and he says, Samuel. I feel like God sounds like Mufasa. Samuel. Samuel gets so startled. He runs to Eli and he goes, Eli, did you call me? And Eli's like, no, boy, I did not call you. Go back to sleep. Leave me alone. It's midnight. Go back to bed. Samuel goes back to bed. All of a sudden, he hears the voice of God again. Samuel. Samuel's like, my gosh, Eli called me again. Eli, was it you? Did, you? did you call me? Did you call me? He's like, no, man, I did not call you. Go back to bed. The third time, Samuel. He runs back to Eli. Eli, did you call me? No, I did not call you. Eventually, Eli recognizes, wait a second. God's calling you. And if God's calling you, here's the proper prayer and response that you should have. Lord, speak. Your servant is listening. So here's where we pick up the story. Samuel chapter three, verse 10. It reads like this. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak. Your servant is listening. What's amazing about this moment is that God responded. But here's what I want you to know. Every time God responds and give you, gives you an assignment, it's never easy. I can't think of one story in the Bible where God gives somebody an assignment and the response is like, my gosh, that's so easy. You don't believe me? Ask Noah. <laughs> one day God shows up to Noah. He's like, hey, Noah, I need you to build an ark. Noah's like, what's an ark? It's a boat. God, why do you need me to build a boat? Because it's gonna rain. What's rain? Rain is water that falls from the sky. Okay, cool, God. And oh, Noah, by the way, I need you to build an ark that's like two football fields long, okay? And he's like, okay, yeah, okay, God, sounds good. Oh, Noah, by the way, uh, I need you to get every living animal species, male and female, and put them on this ark. Easy assignment, right? You still don't believe me? What about Jonah, the runaway prophet? Hey, Jonah, um, I need you to go to Nineveh this is the most savage city. They're perverse. They're full of hate and they're full of anger. And I need you to go over there and tell them to repent and give their hearts to God because if not, I'm gonna judge them and I'm gonna wipe out their nation. Jonah's like, okay, God. He actually runs in a different direction. Okay, you still don't believe me? What about Mary? Hey, Mary, I know you're 15 and I know that you're an unmarried virgin. Talk about a weird story, hello. 
and you're going to have a son. Oh, by the way, and your son's going to be God. Oh, God, that's so easy. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Listen to me. Every time God speaks to someone, he gives them an assignment. It will always challenge your faith. So if you have the courage to pray, God, speak to me, know that he will convict you. He will challenge you. He will push you. But it will cause you to learn to depend on him in a greater way than you ever have before. And every time God speaks back, he wants to challenge you so you can rely on him and grow greater in your faith. Unfortunately, Eli did not give Samuel a great response. God was not like, God was not like, yo, Samuel, I'm going to bless you, bro. Your life is going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. This assignment that I have for you is going to be easy. No. In fact, what he told Samuel was that your boss, your priest, Eli, he's dishonoring me. I need you to go and I need you to tell him a message to turn his heart back to me because if he doesn't, I'm going to wipe out his entire family and I'm going to wipe out the nation as well. So today, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you not to pray this prayer. Do not pray, speak, Lord, I'm listening, unless you want to hear what he actually has to say. Before we jump back into the story, I want to take an opportunity and I want to paint a bigger perspective, a bigger picture of what prayer is. Prayer, I would define it like this. It's simply talking to Jesus. It's having a relationship with him. It's sharing communion and connection with him. I don't know if you know this, but we have a God who loves to hear your voice. He loves to hear your voice. By the way, this is why we come to worship. We don't worship God because he needs to know how good he is. We worship God because we need to be reminded of how good he is. But something amazing happens when God hears our voice. His presence comes down and he begins to speak to us and minister to us and fill us and empower us. Something special begins to happen. If you can sing or not sing, God loves it when you lift up your voice. It doesn't matter if you sound like Kenny G or Cardi B, God's into it. He, lo he just loves to hear your voice. He, he loves to hear your voice. I remember one day uh, I was hanging out with a group of friends, uh, with my guys. It was a guy's night. And at the end of the night, I look at my phone and I've got five missed calls from my mom. She never calls me back to back like this. So I'm thinking, my gosh, something must have happened. I call my mom. I go, mom, is everything okay? She goes, hi, Mike. I'm like, mom, is, is everything fine? She's like, yeah, everything's great. I'm like, but you literally just called me five times back to back. I thought something was wrong. She goes, no, 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 no. I, I just wanted to hear your voice today. Hear me. We have a heavenly father who loves to hear the voice of his children. And maybe you're thinking today, Mike, I don't understand this prayer thing. Because if God already knows what I need to say, why do I need to pray? It's simple. It's because he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to talk to you. And two people without communication, it's just two people. But two people with communication is a relationship. And not only do we serve a God who loves to hear your voice, hear me, we serve a God who actually speaks back. Prayer is a conversation. God wants to hear, he wants you to hear his voice. In other words, prayer is not just God hearing my voice. Prayer is actually listening to God. It's taking a moment to pause, open up your ears and, and say, God, what is it that you actually want to say to me today? God wants you to hear his voice. How, how many of you would say, do you have a friend or you know someone that they just talk a whole lot? If they're sitting next to you, point at them. I'm kidding, don't do that. Like that they just, they just love to talk. Like we all know these people. You get into conversation with them and they never ask you how you're doing. They never show that they're interested in you. They're never asking you questions. The whole entire hour, they're taking a moment and they're simply just talking about themselves. You walk away from the conversation and you realize, wow, I didn't get to share one thing at all. They didn't ask me the one question. Here's my question for you today. When you pray, whose voice do you love to hear the most? Do you love to hear your voice or do you love to hear God's voice? Because I believe that the challenge today is for all of us to pause and to listen to God 
speak. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Today, what I want to do is I want to take a look at Samuel because I believe that he shows us three different postures that invite the voice of God in our life. This is what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 3. It says, Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord. I love that the first posture that we see of Samuel is one of rest. That God's voice finds Samuel in a place of rest. Letting you and I know that the first posture that we need to have if we want to hear the voice of God is to be still. Be still. Against all the trajectory of culture, fight to be still. Psalms 46 verse 10 says this, be still and know that I'm God. Meaning that God's voice is found in a place of stillness. God is saying, pause, relax, chill out, and know that I am God. Let me ask you this question. When was the last time you took an hour out of your schedule to hear the voice of God? I know what some of you are thinking. Micah, an hour? I'm busy, bro. I got bills, bills, bills. Can you pay my automobile bills? I am so busy. I wake up in the morning at 6 o'clock a.m. I'm getting text messages and emails from my boss. They're going to dress these crazy kids who don't know Jesus yet. I got to get them dressed. I got to feed them breakfast. I got to put them in a minivan. I got to drive them to school. Then I got to go to work. I got to work 40 plus hours a week. Then after work, I got to pick up our kids. Then we got to take them to band practice, baseball practice, 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 practice. We get back home, it's 8 p.m. We forget that we got to cook dinner, so we go out and we go buy dinner. By the time we get back home, it's 11 o'clock at night, and we spent no time with God. I get it. Sometimes life will be busy, but hear me, we still need to make an intentional decision to connect with Him, because if not, Monday through Friday will fly by, and we will miss actually having connection with God. I think not only are we too busy, I also think we're way too distracted. We live in a day where we have weapons of mass distraction. The average America scrolls three, the, av the average American scrolls three hours a day on social media alone. 10 hours, seven to 10 hours a day, we're on our screens. We're on our screens. So I think we're really just distracted. And then maybe you're here and you're saying, Mike, you know what, okay. If I can hear his voice, how do I hear it? I wanna give you a super simple thing to do in your time of prayer. The best way to hear God's voice is by opening up God's word. It's by opening up this book. Please understand that our God is alive and our God is active. And this book is alive and it's active. This book is the only book that's living and when you read it, baby, it reads you. It will convict you. It will guide you. It will lead you. It will fill you. It will direct you. It will inspire you. It will challenge you. It will redirect you. The best way to hear God's voice is opening up this book. I remember a couple weeks ago, I had a guy from our church. He came up to me. He was like, yo, Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike, man, I just bro, I just need a fresh word from God, man. I need a fresh word from God. I need, I need a fresh word from God. And I'm like, all right, man, great. Do you have a Bible? He goes, no, nah, man, I hate reading. I don't have a Bible. I was like, bro, it sounds like you need a fresh Bible. <laughs> hear me, the reason that a lot of us don't hear God's voice is because we keep his book closed. And when you keep his book closed, you actually end up shutting the mouth of God. But here's what I know. God will also speak to you through some circumstances. Have you ever found yourself in a circumstance where you were like, oh my gosh, there's no way that this would have happened if it were not for God? Like sometimes God opens doors of opportunities for your life and you're like, that, that was 100% God. I remember this happened to my wife and I three years ago. We're literally staycationing from Miami in Orlando and we're walking through Disney Springs and all of a sudden, boom, God drops Orlando in our hearts at the same exact time. God tells us to move to Orlando. A couple months later, I get in contact with real life. After I get in contact with real life, four weeks later, I move to central Florida. It was like, there's no way 
that this would have happened if it were not for God. But then there's other times, there's other times where the door is so closed where you know God definitely closed that door. He 100% closed that door. Because God will often speak to you through your circumstances. Sometimes he'll say yes, and sometimes he'll say no. And I know that a lot of us think there's no way that God has told me yes, but if we take, if we take a moment, we will realize that we have gotten far more yeses from God than we've ever gotten no's. Far more yeses from God. Friend, we wouldn't be here today if it were not for the yes of God. I've got air in my lungs. I've got life flowing through me. I've got a church family. Why? Because the yes of God in my life. But also sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says no. I remember I was in high school. I'll spare you the details, but I had a friend girl and um, I thought I was gonna marry this girl, you know? I was like, my gosh, she's way out of my league. This is gonna be amazing. God, would this be the girl that I marry? Three days later, she comes up to me. She's like, Mike, I just gotta tell you, it's not you, it's me. She was a liar. She was a liar. It's not you, it's, it's, it's me. Fast forward a couple years later, I meet my wife, Steph. We get married, everything's awesome. A couple months ago, I'm at a social gathering and this girl comes up to me with her husband and she's like, hey Mike, it's so-and-so, remember me? It was the girl that dumped me. I remember walking away from the conversation thinking, God, thank you for saying no. <laughs> here's, here's what I'm trying to tell you. That oftentimes God, God's rejection is simply God's direction in your life. And if you're experiencing a no, it's because we have a good father who wants to do great things in you and through you. As I come to a close, the second thing we need to do to, in order to hear from God and posture ourselves well is to be willing. Be willing to do whatever it is that God tells you to do. Because sometimes in our prayer time, we approach God with a wish list, but I'm wondering what would it look like if we approach God with a blank sheet of paper and say, God, speak to me. And when he speaks to us, that we would be willing to apply the thing that he told us to do. At the end of 2022, uh, last December, uh, I kind of felt like I was hitting a spiritual ceiling in my walk with, in my walk with Jesus. Uh, I felt like my emotions were all over the place and had to get some therapy and some counseling. And I just felt like things were off. I don't know if you've ever felt that where you feel like you're hitting like a spiritual wall. And I remember going to God in prayer. I'm like, okay, God, would you speak to me about the areas in my life that I don't know? What are the unseen sins in my life that I'm ignoring and not paying attention to? And I gotta tell you, God started speaking and he did not stop speaking. I was like, God, just give me 10, okay? Just give me 10. <laughs> give me your top 10. And I almost walked away from the conversation like, okay, God, cool, thanks. But I almost felt like God grabbed my shirt and he was like, no, I need you to take men out for coffee. I need you to confess your sin and I need you to have them pray for you. I was like, um, God, come again. And he didn't say it again, but I knew that he spoke. So I took men out for coffee. We're sitting around a table I'm their pastor at our church in Orlando. I start confessing to them areas where I'm doing wrong. I feel like I'm sinning. They prayed for me. And I just gotta tell you that I felt like a spiritual barrier was broken as I entered into 2024. Here's why I'm sharing this story. Because when God speaks to you, apply it. Do it and you will see what God will do in your life. And maybe you're here today and you're praying, God, my marriage right now needs help, but help me be a good wife, a good husband. What do I need to do to serve this person better? Or maybe you're in this room today and you're saying, God, I just don't wanna come to church. I wanna be the church. Where can I apply my gifts to serve? Or maybe you're in this room to say, today and you're saying, God, I wanna be generous. I wanna bless somebody. Show me the person that you, want, that you want me to bless. But here's the most important part. Don't ask God to speak to you if you didn't obey the thing that he told you to do last week. Obey him first. And once you do the thing that he tells you, then God will speak again. So not only do we need to be willing to do the thing that God tells us, I'm closing point three, we need to be ready. When God speaks to you, you need to be ready to do the thing that he shows you. I mean, you got to think about Samuel for a second. 
I mean, this is a crazy story. God shows up and speaks to Samuel and he gives him a very, very, very difficult assignment. He says, Samuel, I know that you're 12, but I need you to carry this message to your boss, Eli. And I need you to tell Eli that he's been sinning and to turn his heart back to me. He's 12, 12. If a 12 year old can listen to the voice of God, so can you and I, he's 12. The reason that this was so important is because in that day, God stopped speaking because the prophet of that time was Eli. And because Eli was disobeying God, God stopped speaking to him. So God was looking for another prophet. He found a 12 year old boy that will be obedient to him. It was a test of his obedience. And when Samuel did it, God called him to be the very next prophet. People say that Samuel was, was probably one of the best prophets of all time. This was the prophet that anointed David to be king, the best king in history. God used his life to do incredible things. Why? Because he was simply obedient. He was ready to do the thing that God told him to do. My challenge for you this week is to pray, speak, Lord, I'm listening. But here's what I want to tell you. This is a dangerous prayer. Because when you ask God to speak to you, he's going to respond. And he's going to challenge you to do something that you would have never wanted to do sometimes. He's going to show you areas in your heart that are full of sin. He's going to challenge you to step out of your comfort zone. He's going to challenge you to start that ministry or start that business or to, to step out of your comfort. He's going to speak to you. It's a dangerous prayer. But you know what's more dangerous? Not praying this prayer. Because if you don't, you will never hear what the God who loves you and created you you will never hear from him the thing that he wants to speak to you, do in you, and do through you. Hear me. I believe that this can be your best year yet if, if it's your best year spiritually. And the way that it's gonna be your best year spiritually is by having a posture where we're still, where we're willing, and we're ready. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Can I pray for you really quick? Father, we take a moment and we pause. We're still. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. I pray right now, God, that your voice would find people in this place. God, I thank you because when you speak to us, you challenge us and you push us. So Father, I pray that today that we would not only position ourselves to hear from you, but we would be willing to do the thing that you told us to do. Father, I pray for everyone here today. I pray, God, that you would give us the confidence and the courage to follow and to obey your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. I wanna pray for one more group of people. Maybe you're in this room today and you don't know Jesus. Hear me, the only way that you can hear his voice for your life is by having a relationship with God. And I want you to know that God loves you. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life, but there's a problem. And that problem is called sin. And what sin does is that it separates us from God. But because Jesus loved you so much, what did he do? He sent his son Jesus to die for you on the cross. Why? So that you can have a relationship with him. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Maybe you're in this room today and you're saying, Mike, you know what? I want to have a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Today you can have eternity secure, knowing that you can go to heaven. Today, if you want to step into a relationship with Jesus, on the count of three, every eye closed, every head bowed, I'm going to ask that you would shoot your hand up in the air just so I can see who you are. I'm going to pray for you. You can put your hand right back down. One, two, and three hands in it. Just lift them. Wow, hands everywhere. Hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up. Father, I thank you so much for the decisions that are being made. I thank you because your word says that today is the day of salvation. Father, I thank you for your voice that chases us. I thank you for the plan and the purpose that you have for everyone in this room. I pray that today they would remember it as the day that they decided to follow you. No looking back. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said, amen. 
Thanks for joining us today for Real Life Online. We hope this video encourages you. As part of our Real Life family, we want you to know that we are here for you. If you need prayer or would like to get connected to any of the resources we've mentioned, you can find it all at real.life slash connect. And if you would like to stay up to date with what God is doing here at Real Life and always know when we go live, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for spending part of the day with us. We want you to know that God loves you, we love you, and we'll see you next time.